Welcome to Pharmacology. Okay, so for this section, uh, we'll go through about the pathophysiological aspects of angina. Basically, angina is a disease of the heart itself. So, as shown in the diagram, um, the, the blood supply towards the heart itself um, it has to be equal or balanced in a way. So, for example, angina occurs when the demand of the oxygen uh, for the heart is actually much higher than the supply, meaning the heart itself, as a separate organ, actually has insufficient oxygen supply, which then can cause um, all the cells in the, the cells in the heart to die off and so on and so forth. So there are a few uh, determinants of the myocardial o uh, oxygen consumption, which includes um, the wall stress, meaning how big is it being stretched up, because don't forget um, the heart actually has the ability to stretch. It's a little bit like a, a water fill into a balloon in a way. So the more the stretch is, the greater the pressure and so on. So another very important determinant is the heart rate, meaning how fast the heart beats in a way. So the harder, the, on the faster that the heart beats, obviously it needs more um, energy, which translates to more oxygen requirement for the heart itself to function. Right? So, yep. So how can this occur? So first, let's look at the myocardial oxygen supply to the heart. So in this case, it's a little bit different from other, mm, not really, to other heart disease that like hypertension that we mentioned earlier on in the class, whereby it's about the blood supply towards other organs. Now we have to view that it's the heart, the, we are focusing on the heart itself, it's like a, a separate entity in a way. So to ensure that the heart can function well, to enable it to pump the blood throughout the whole body system, so we have to maintain that there's enough and sufficient oxygen supply to the heart itself. Okay, so there's a few main arteries here, which are the main um, channels of blood vessels which are involved in supplying the blood and also oxygen to the heart itself to enable it to function. And secondly, it's about the demand as mentioned just now. Um, so there's a few key terms here in a way, it's about like terms like preload, afterload, right? So whereby, you can imagine the greater the balloon is stretched, so there's more force and contraction is it required to pump for the heart to move and pump in back into its original straight original state and to relax again and to pump again. Right? So um, there's also the veins, right, and also the arterioles. So you can see that there's preload. So imagine if there's more uh, blood which goes back into the heart from the veins so it cause an increase in the preload meaning there's an increase in the blood volume back into the heart so again it can increase the ventricular wall stress and similarly to the afterload so it's the amount of um, the blood which actually gets out of the blood in a way right so there's some text here you can read through if you're still blur about it right so again we want to maintain that there's sufficient supply of the myocardial oxygen to meet the demand right so um here to introduce a few terms right so here um, as the general term that we use in this particular portion is about angina but actually clinically is divided into a few different types of classification so you can see there's arteriosclerotic plaque here so this is the stable angina whereby you're assuming that the plaque is stable it doesn't rupture and so on if it's unstable and so on with this rupture thrombos and so on there's um, different characterization uh, whereby it's also called under acute coronary syndrome right so these are clinically different in a way we should listen more about it in the clinical side of the lecture so just to bear in mind if the plaque here is lipid rich and if they are softer in a way so they're actually in a way more dangerous than the collagen rich or the calcium rich one because um, they are more unstable because they're softer so when they're um, unstable it can cause all this thrombus rupture and so on which makes the whole situation worse right so um, for this angina it actually covers the whole topic in a way but here is more on the maintenance therapy what you call not for the emergency ones as you expect if for example in the nos uh, in the uh, n uh, non STEMI and STEMI, which we call non ST elevated and ST elevated ones. There's also particular uh, clinical management in the uh, A and E department.
right? So um, just a brief overview for the treatment. So again, we are assuming the balance between the oxygen demand and oxygen supply. So uh, we want to maintain this balance. So the easiest way to do is you can actually reduce the demand. So whereby it can be drugs can be used to actually reduce the heart rate. So the heart doesn't have to work too hard, too hard uh, and reduce the contractility. Another way is to increase the oxygen supply to the heart uh, by using uh, vasodilators, by dilating it. So there's more blood flow through, so there's more oxygen supply. Right, that's all for the brief overview for this particular section. See ya!